Okay, in this video, we are going to look into force sensing materials. And I have a few samples on my bench, and I'll go through each one and give you some ideas on how you could incorporate them into your own projects. So the first one we're going to look at are force sensing resistors, the ones on the left here, FSRs. So as I press down on the FSR, the resistance of the two terminals will change. So as I increase the pressure on the FSR, the resistance, the resistance between the two terminals will decrease. There's also a flex sensor, works on the same principle, but when we flex it, we'll get a change in resistance of the two terminals. Then we have piezo sensors, like this one here, it's a little piezo speaker. So if I apply pressure, or if I flex it or tap it, we'll get a voltage output. And from that technology, we could actually build a little push button switch from piezo material. And I have a piezo material on a cantilever with a lead weight on the end that will detect vibration. We also have piezo coaxial cable, like this one here. So it's a piezo coaxial cable with piezo material interwoven in the cable. And we could weave this cable in a chain link fence. And if anybody tries to climb the fence, we'll get a voltage output on these two wires. Now we have conductive foam, which you can see here, where we put our ICs in to protect it from static charge. And if we squeeze this uh, conductive foam, the resistance will change, it will decrease as we put pressure on this conductive foam. Same principle in Velostat. That's this plastic here you see in uh, anti-static bags. So as we put pressure on this Velostat, the resistance will decrease. Okay, I cut out a piece of Velostat in a rectangular shape and I got some solder wick, you can see here, used for desoldering uh, parts on a PC board. And I scotch taped the solder wick on both sides of the Velostat, hooked up two wires. Now the resistance of this Velostat and this resistor up here form a voltage divider and the output of the voltage divider is fit into the analog to digital converter of the Arduino Nano. So now I have myself a little pressure sensor. So if I press down on it anywhere on the strip, you can see the LEDs come on and it can actually detect the amount of pressure. So anywhere along this strip, if I apply pressure, I got myself a little pressure sensor. Now we could also use anti-static foam to build a little pressure sensor similar to how we did it with the Velostat. Okay, I cut out a small piece of anti-static foam and I applied a connector on top of the foam and I have a connector on the bottom of the foam and the two wires are fed up to my voltage divider resistor on the breadboard and the output of the voltage divider is fed into the analog to digital converter on the Arduino Nano. So as I apply pressure to the anti-static foam, the resistance will change. I'll get a change in voltage and that will be indicated on the LEDs. So as I press down, you can see the LEDs indicate pressure. So that's another way we could do it, making a pressure sensitive device using some anti-static foam. Okay, next, we are going to look into how we could use an FSR, a force sensing resistor, in a pressure sensitive application. Okay, I have my FSR, my force sensing resistor, connected up to my voltage divider on my breadboard. So I have a 3.3 K ohm resistor and the resistance of my FSR is my voltage divider and the output is connected into the analog to digital converter of the Arduino Nano. So as I apply pressure to my FSR you can see it's indicating pressure by turning on the LEDs. Same as when we use the Velostat and our anti-static foam we're just using an FSR for the sensor. Okay that's one way to interface an FSR using a voltage divider and feeding it into a microcontroller ADC. But in this case we're going to use a, a little oscillator using a CD4093 Schmidt trigger NAND gate. It's configured as an RC oscillator. So the R and the C determine the frequency output of the little oscillator. So this is our C, that's our capacitor. And the FSR will be the, will be the resistor. So by changing the value of the resistor as I apply pressure, it's going to change the output frequency of the oscillator. So instead of hooking it up to a scope, I'll hook it up to a speaker, so I'll turn on the speaker and have that hooked up to the output of the oscillator. So if I press on the FSR, see I get a low frequency uh, oscillation. Now if I press harder,
Okay, using the same technology, you can obtain a flex sensor, like the one here. Now instead of applying pressure to the sensor, we flex the sensor, and as we flex it, the output resistance will change. You can see, we can use the same circuit and feed that into a microcontroller, and we could actually get flex angles. Now by using two FSR sensors and a ball bearing, we can make a simple impact detector. Okay, here's a prototype device used to measure impact g-forces and it uses force dependent resistors. You can see the two resistors there, the two leads coming out of this device. So inside this metal block there's a steel ball bearing and when you have impact on one side the ball bearing will be forced into the force dependent resistor similar on the other side and it will activate the other force dependent resistor. So these two outputs will be fed into a microcontroller and they could detect either force, positive or negative g-force, and continuous motion. So I'll open it up, we'll have a look inside. There's a little gasket. So you set your play, how much, how much uh, ball play that you want. And there's one force dependent resistor. It has a little rubber uh, pressure point for the steel bearing. And it's a little steel ball bearing. And there's your second force dependent resistor on the other end, on the other plate. So it fits in there. And you put it on your gasket and the back plate. And you got yourself a little detector. Okay, next, we are going to have a look at some piezo sensors. So this is a piezo push button switch. It's called a vandal proof switch because there's no moving parts. It's all one piece construction and it's potted on the end here. All the electronics are potted inside the enclosure so it's waterproof and there's two wires coming out of it. And if you press on the face of the switch you could activate the load. So you could toggle it. So the two wires, one is ground, one goes to ground, another one goes to a pull up resistor and then the pull up resistor goes into in input of the microcontroller and when we press on it we'll get a negative going pulse for about 100 milliseconds and then we can trigger our load. Okay, I built a little charge pump circuit on my breadboard similar to the one that's inside my vandal proof piezo switch. And I got myself a piezo speaker you can see here, you get them online, they're very inexpensive and I mounted it on top of a rubber washer out of a garden hose and I just scotch taped it down to my bench. So now when I press on the piezo speaker I could toggle the load because the open collector of my charge pump circuitry is fed into my Arduino Nano the same way I did with the vandal proof switch. So basically I'm simulating my vandal proof switch. Okay here's the code running on my Nano. Now it's written in Flashforth but you could write a similar program using the Arduino IDE. So I'm using pins 8, 9, 10 and 11 GPIO to drive the four LEDs and I have five words to control LEDs. Zero LED turns off all the LEDs and four LED turns on the LEDs. And then anywhere in between, one LED, two LED, or three LED. Now my main program is called FSM, Force Sensing Materials. And the first thing it does, it initializes all the GPIO pins eight to 11 as outputs. Then it selects analog to digital converter A0 then it goes into a begin until loop. This is an infinite loop and it will come out of this loop when we hit any key on the keyboard. Now in this loop it's reading the ADC value continuously. That's from a pressure sensor and if it's greater than a thousand then it'll turn off all LEDs and if it's within zero to seven hundred it'll turn on all four LEDs and then anywhere in between. So as we're pressing down on our sensor we're getting a value of our LEDs from no LEDs to four LEDs, depending on the amount of pressure that we're pressing down on our sensor. Okay, so that was my little tutorial on force sensing materials, and I hope it gave you guys some ideas. Like using this Velostat material, I actually used it to build a sensor that went into your shoe, and it'll detect a person walking, and you could actually use it to trigger an electronic drum set. So come up with your own ideas to build your own force sensing projects.